There was a day when communism was a credible and real threat to democracy in America. Has anything changed today? Some people would say, yes, the communism, something's in our past, but is it really? All these years later, communism is being brought to the forefront of discussion as a credible threat to the way we do life in America. Actually, in 2014, Dr. Ben Carson was interviewed on Fox News, The Kelly File, and he pointed out in the book, The Naked Communist, that each of those points highlighted in that book has taken place in America. I know, watch. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Well, here we are today, again, all these years later, and communism is being brought to the forefront. Can you believe that people even think that communism would even work, socialism would even work? We've seen every case of communism in every country always fail. And they always think they have a better system when they start the next uh, aspect where communism is where the government owns everything and they allot things to the people. Well, Dr. Ben Carson was on Fox News with Megyn Kelly some time back and he was talking very specifically about how important the, the Republic of America, how important our freedom stance is in the world because if we don't stand up for freedom, we're gonna see great tyranny come on the earth, but he had great hopes. Matter of fact, listen, this is Dr. Ben Carson now. Well, first of all, uh, this is an exceptional nation, and it happens to be the pinnacle nation in the world. Not the first one, there have been others before us, ancient Egypt, Greece, Rome, Great Britain, France, Spain, all pinnacle nations, all thought they were gonna be there forever, all went down the tubes. What happened in each case? They became enamored of sports and entertainment, lifestyles of the rich and famous. They tolerated political corruption. They lost their moral compass. Uh, they lost their vision. These are all the things that are happening to us. And the, the real question is, can we learn from the things that happened in the past that led to the decline of great nations, or must we inexorably go down the same path? I believe that we can learn because we're different than all those other nations. We are the child of every other nation. So we have all of that history and we have their best interest in mind. We also are a Judeo-Christian nation. Uh, those values are the things that really gave us strength. Did, did we make mistakes? Of course we make mistakes. Every nation makes mistakes. But we are the most benign superpower the world has ever known. And if we go off the scene, we will be replaced by someone else. The likelihood of them being as benign as we are is mm -hmm. extremely remote. Oh, this is so important when you're hearing about the kind of importance it is for America to, to take the stand for freedom. Benign, what he means is, is that we're not spreading like a cancer across the earth. You know, we could use our power for evil, but America has used its power for good. Made some mistakes, yes. But when you compare America to all the other countries and Dinesh D'Souza, we'll have more about that movie a little bit of this program, but he made a movie sp talking specifically about America and the lies that have been spoken over America and the truth about it. And we'll talk about that. It's so important because America has, it stands for good. It's amazing how many good things are happening in the face of the earth because America stood. Although we had some real difficult days and the last administration seemed to be trying to kind of take us to a place that we couldn't be any good and minimalize America, we're seeing what happened when America went to go back and, and become less of an input on the face of the earth. What happened? ISIS began to spread everywhere. Uh, terrorism began to spread everywhere and it's still happening right now because of just sitting back and pulling back and drawing back. As a matter of fact, Megyn Kelly said specifically, if America does not come to this place and stay here, who's going to take our place? Let's listen to Megyn Kelly. That's, the, uh, that's a big question, and there was an uh, op-ed in, in uh, the New York Times earlier this week by a German newspaper editor saying, look, it, when Europe can afford to sit back because we've got America that has our back, America doesn't have the same luxury. No one's going to step in, no one good, if we step back and wait for somebody to fill this void. No one good is going to step in in America's place. I mean, think about that. We saw that for the last eight years. The more we pull back, the more evil, evil loves a vacuum. As soon as we pull back, you start seeing things like ISIS arising, people thinking they're going to start a caliphate again. You start seeing soldiers beheaded in Great Britain right there on the main streets. You see uh, journalists beheaded, James Foley and others that have taken place, just evil things that have taken place in society. It's because America pulled back. Well, America's stepping back out again. As a matter of fact, to do that, 
It's going to be some real difficult days ahead, but it's headed to a good place. The Benham Brothers, by the way, they have an article in uh, Charisma News Magazine. And they wrote this book. The book is Whatever the Cost. And these are some amazing brothers who are Christians who love God, who love our country. And we're going to hear some of the things they wrote about because they're saying specifically in this article, bloodshed is coming to America. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You gotta have a strategy and you gotta fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you gotta fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win. You'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take. And quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. So many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this and look what they're doing. They're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we want to bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at vfnkb.com. That's vfnkb.com. Get your free copy today. The Benham Brothers. Yes. They wrote this book, Whatever the Cost. And if you haven't met these guys, you know, we have met them through media and their interviews they're doing, yeah. that uh, they're amazing young men. They were taught really well by their father and now Great they are book. fathers themselves. And, and, uh, but they are saying that there's going to be bloodshed. Bloodshed is coming to America? Yes. Well, what, Article, what, yeah. Article is written in uh, Charisma magazine. Mm -hmm. And as you said, bloodshed, bloodshed is coming to America. This is what they're saying. This is what they're saying. Uh -huh. And it won't be a response to oppression, but the results of aggression against God and our constitutional form of government. It makes me think of what's happening in Israel. You know, we, we lost a, a wonderful young soldier, Sergeant Major Hadass, and they're coming from a place of defense. Yeah. But aggression was coming to her and took her life mm -hmm. through uh, Palestinian terrorists. And that's what he's talking about, that yes. you're standing for what's right, and then somebody's aggressively trying to snuff that out. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Okay. They continue to write, the increasingly violent acts in our streets, town hall meetings, and university campuses are simply birth pangs for a greater upheaval that brings, that's brewing uh, hot, and it's not by accident. Although the narrative is that street protests and student uprisings are simply a response to Trump as a president or guest speakers with conservative values, the truth is that they are coordinated attacks resulting from subversive, anti-God, anti-American anti ideology that has indoctrinated our university for over 50 years. And I think about this, I think about you know the, the book that we were introduced to the naked communist that was written in 1963 by an FBI agent. Yes. And the things that he laid out, you know, uh, it's almost, I remember Dr. Carson, as a matter of fact, Dr. Carson, this is Dr. Carson here, and Dr. Carson's talking about how it's almost like this book was written just yesterday. Mm. He's talking about communism and the things that are taking place. As a matter of fact, take a, this is Dr. Carson speaking specifically, you'll hear him talk about the naked communist. It's about this book. He says CIA, but it's FBI and how it's happening right now. Take a look. What, what, to what extent do you feel that divisiveness is playing a role in what we're seeing right now? It's playing a, a, an extremely large role uh, in what we're doing. There are elements in our society whose only desire is to drive a wedge into any little crack that they can find. Therefore, race wars, income wars, age wars, gender wars, religious wars, How damaging anything is that? that you can possibly make. It's extremely damaging. A house divided against itself cannot stand. And the purpose of it, of course, is to make people throw their hands up and discuss, say, this isn't working, we need to move to another system. Go back and read the Neil Marxist literature. It's all right there. All of this stuff is not secret. I, that's why I encourage people all the time, go and read this stuff. So the naked communists, John, what is this about? What is this book about? Well, reportedly, this book is, is, reveals how revolutionaries are intended to turn our nation from a constitutionalism to communism without firing a single bullet. Now, this is important because- They have it, different things set up about you know, what that would be, right? Yeah, there's 45 strategies, if you will. Right. And, and we're going to share a few of them you know, with the audience. Well, let's take a look at them now. Yeah, sure. It was written in 1963. Dr. Carson just said it was just like it was written just yesterday. Amazing. And, they, and Megyn Kelly says, people won't probably like you. They didn't have the part of the interview. Because of you, you actually say this. 
And he's going like, read the books. It's the truth. It's the truth, you know. And so this is actually, uh, if you can see this when we're talking about it, this first, this is what they say that you need to do to be able to turn a country from, uh, from democracy, from a republic to communism mm -hmm. without firing a shot. And this was written in the 60s now. 1963. Okay. But it seems like it just somebody wrote it today because this is what's happening right yeah. now. What's this first one? Get control of the schools. Use them as transmission belts for socialism and current communist propaganda. Soften the cu curriculum and get control of teachers' associations. Put the party line in textbooks. This is exactly what's already happened yeah. already. Yeah. You know, with Common Core, with all the things that are happening in the school, it's like the school system, including the universities, mm -hmm. are Big being time. used against the country. Absolutely. And they're training folks up. They literally have classes how to protest the government, uh, how, specifically how to protest President Trump. An uh, actual course. A course that they have this. on the area. Right. And then they have conservative speakers that have been going to um, universities in California and different ones. But they've well, been they've been banned. I mean, there's some But they're, throwing, they're starting fires, they're throwing mailboxes yeah. at it, and they've already ignited then the hearts of our young with education, the curriculum. They've already done that. Yeah. And the textbooks, it's amazing what's taken place. So that's check. Done. Done. Right. How to turn a country from democracy to communism. To communism. So that's check, right? Okay. okay. What's the second thing? Another one here is gain control of all student newspapers. Check. That's an easy one. All right, done. check. Go to the all phone. right, next one. Use student riots to foment public protests against programs or organizations that are under communist attack. Oh, is that not taking place? Yeah, you look at every college campus right now, not every, but many college campuses, they're protesting about everything. And not only that, they have illegal aliens on the campus and say that we are a place of refuge. It's like, no, you're actually a federal funded thing by the tax exactly. dollars. Exactly. And your mom is paying for America. your, and your mom is paying for the other half of the education. You need to go back to school. That's right. But we saw people on the streets protesting and stuff. These were college students that they yeah. trained. To, so that's actually happening. So I would say, so check. check. All okay. right. Next one, infiltrate the press. Get control of book review assignments, editorial writing, policy making positions. Well, that hadn't happened. No, of course not. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, think it's about this. press as we know it is of over course, with. Of course. They've totally infiltrated, and these, they really know what they're doing. I mean, they know they're saying it's not true, but they continue to say the narrative over and over again. And Linsky says, if you repeat a lie long enough, Saul Linsky, the rules yeah. for radicals, uh, if you repeat a lie long enough, people begin to believe it is truth, right? Right. So right. that's check. They've got. Yeah, that's I believe Hitler said that as well too. And, yes. Uh, he, he Ger told Ger a lot Gerbils of lies. or. Okay. Yeah, Gerbils. Check. Okay. Check. Done. All right. Next one. Gain control of key positions in radio, TV, and motion pictures. No. Check. <laughs> that's a check. <laughs> but this is. I mean, think you about. You can't even this. watch PBS today without that being it's like, is this a communist program going? Are you promoting the takedown of our government? Are my taxpayer taxpayer sixty minutes? Going to that? All these programs, CNN. All, but look like, at the movies too. I yeah, mean, it's it's, right? it's all all going that way. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Here's the next one. Eliminate all laws governing obscenity by calling them censorship and a violation of free speech and free press. In other words, an actual law that's legal, they're saying that is obscenity. The law itself is like a cross in Pensacola, Florida, yeah. at Bayview <laughs> Park, where a judge says that's obscenity, yeah. and they take the cross down in But Pensacola, they're saying Florida. it's okay. Don't put a law against obscenity, because if you do, we're going to say that you're censoring our free speech. Now, this was written in 1963 by an FBI agent. Uh, how to, what's, what's the plan, what is the strategy to be able to take a country from from freedom and democracy to a communist Communism. government. Yeah. And we're saying check, this is the sixth one. Yes. I would say check. Check, for All sure. Right. What's the next one? Here's the next one. Break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography, obscenity in books, magazines, motion pictures, radio, and TV. And that hadn't happened, has it? Internet happened? wasn't around, but you would say internet today, right? right? Does that happen? Of course it's happened. I don't know what has happened. It check. Is like, that's a huge check. Yeah. So far, it's 100%, John. Absolutely. Okay. Here's the next one. Sl uh, present homosexuality, degeneracy, and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. Check. Check. We have Check. gay marriage. We have all this. Uh, Pornography running there's rampant. There's 96-something uh, genders now. Like they say, there's instead of two yeah. genders, there's like... I don't know what you're calling it. Yeah, but the it, thing is, yeah. but, and they're hitting it just right, that it's normal. No, right. this stuff is not normal. Right. If you go in the bathroom today, you've got to think. Yeah, exactly. Is this, you know, What's you don't even know. You've got to make yeah. sure that things are right. You don't know where it is. And it's like, it's become normal. 
you right. know, and so. That normal and then, and then you're threatened if you think, think no, or say otherwise. Normal, right. Yeah. And so I would say check. Check. Okay. Done. All right. Here's yes. another one. Eliminate prayer or any phrase of religious expression in the school, on the grounds, that it violates the principle of separation in church and state. So no prayer in schools. Um, check. Check. Done. It's amazing. This is one of the yeah. strategies. To be, you move, remove God out of the schools. It makes me think about the, the, the uh, exchange student that was at Harvard and what he said about oh, America. Yes. As a matter of Do fact, we have that? yeah, I want you to see this because he said I, when he studied America, he found out why America actually exists. Take a look. Some time ago, I had a conversation with a Marxist economist from China. He was coming to the end of a Fulbright Fellowship here in Boston. And I asked him if he had learned anything that was surprising or unexpected. And without any hesitation, he said, yeah, I had no idea how critical religion is to the functioning of democracy. The reason why democracy works, he said, is not because the government was designed to oversee what everybody does. But rather, democracy works because most people, most of the time, voluntarily choose to obey the law. And in your past, most Americans attended a church or a synagogue every week, and they were taught there by people who they respected. My friend went on to say that Americans followed these rules because they had come to believe that they weren't just accountable to society, they were accountable to God. My Chinese friend heightened a vague but nagging concern I've harbored inside that as religion loses its influence over the lives of Americans, what will happen to our democracy? Where are the institutions that are going to teach the next generation of Americans that they too need to voluntarily choose to obey the laws? Because if you take away religion, you can't hire enough police. If you take away religion, you cannot hire enough police. And that's exactly the mm -hmm. strategy. You know, why do we obey a law? And the people are, you're seeing today, people are going like, the younger generation, the people that are buying this, they're going, yeah, why do we, act? why is there norms? Why is there just a male and a female? Why is there just marriage this way? Why is, why are the police police? Why are, they're questioning everything. Right. But the, the result of that is when you pull God out and you pull prayer out, you have chaos. You, you have you have no guidelines anymore. There is no truth. There are no boundaries. There right. are no boundaries. So that's happening. I would say check. check. Okay. What's the next Here's one? Here's the next one. Discredit the American Constitution. We're talking about you know this is important to remember in case you forgot. You know the strategy according to a book written by the FBI agent in 1963 and Dr. Carson says it's just like it was written yesterday that how do you turn a democracy to a communist? How do you get rid of freedom? and turn it into a, a communist government, right. and we're seeing it take place. These come from a book called The Naked uh, Communists. The Naked Communists, and these are different strategies. And what's this next strategy? Discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step with modern needs, a hindrance to cooperation between nations on a worldwide basis. Our very own former president mm. stated that it is a list of negative rights and began to talk as less about the very thing you're sworn to defend. A Supreme Court Justice, Ruth Ginsburg, said to yeah, a nation that was yeah, forming, yeah. this is an outdated document. Don't use it for your Don't country. Don't use it. Find and, another And their job, law. it says, they swear to protect the Constitution of the United States, the whole purpose of them being there. All laws are based on the Constitution. That's exactly it. Without the Constitution, without, without the Constitution, there's no laws, and without God, there's no obedience to those laws, what right. we're talking about. And so you're seeing that. We got, let's cover one more before we go okay, to the break here. Okay, here's another one. Discredit the American founding fathers. Present them as selfish aristocrats who had no concern for the common man. That's a, so that's they've so, so have done that I mean, over and false. over again. You know, yeah. they've they've just. I've never heard so many bad things about individuals before. Yeah, the, the, full of you know bigotry and stuff like that. It's not true. These these right. these men are to be honored. To be honored, and they're the founding fathers. They're the ones that signed the Constitution. They're we have that, a country because of them. They risk their lives yeah. and their liberties and their wealth to be able to have a country that we have today. Yeah. And uh, the Dinesh D'Souza's movie. What is the the movie that we want to bring that up? Well, bring, after the break, we're going to bring that up to you, because he 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 did an awesome job yeah, of the reality of of our country and the lies that are being put over our country. And you need to watch that movie in the context of this program to really give you a context of that. Wait a minute. Out of all the countries, 
and America's done some bad things. America's done a lot less bad things than other countries. Right. And, and that's, that's an and amazing thing. if other thing. countries were afforded the opportunities that we had, we don't know if they were going to They wouldn't have taken it. They wouldn't have done it. They wouldn't have taken it. Other no. than probably Israel. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You've got to have a strategy and you've got to fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you've got to fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win. You'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take. And quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. So many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this. And look what they're doing. They're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we want to bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at vfnkb.com. That's vfnkb.com. Get your free copy today. You know, we are listening, or reading an article by the Benham Brothers in the uh, Charisma magazine talking about there's going to be bloodshed in America because you have people that are, are, are aggressive and they're creating an aggression against the right standing in America, against the yeah. Constitution, against what we just saw take place on the ball fields in Alexandria, which is Virginia assassination, assassination attempt, attempt on U.S. Congress men. 20 to 25 of them out there. And, and had it not been for the, for the heroic... Two you know, police officers, eventually another one out absolutely. there. Absolutely. Brave officers. Thank God for our law enforcement officers. So there's, the, in this book, The Naked Communists, it was written in 1963. Dr. Ben Carson says it's just like it was written yesterday. And to mm -hmm. us, we're reading it like, yeah, this yeah. is. And these are different strategies that they have. They wrote out to be able to take a democracy from freedom to turning to it communism. over to, com to communism. And so far, it's 100%, So John. far. So we're just reading through a couple more of these so you can okay, see where we're here's at. Here's another one. Belittle all forms of American culture and discourage the teaching of American history on the ground that it was only a minor part of the big picture. And I just heard that, that uh, David Barton with Wall Builders, mm. he has a two-week crash course on it, true American history. Really? It starts with absolute truth, which that's what the, everybody's trying to pull out of it. They have people these they're, yeah. they're in the darker. And so... Uh, history majors, John, when they've graduated with four-year degree, they're going to get their master's. master's degree in history to go teach people. And she said to uh, uh, David Barton that uh, they stopped teaching history to her in the eighth grade. And Amazing. the history they teach is like the history of goofy stuff. Nothing like a... Yeah. Nothing like a... Importance. <laughs> uh, like this. Yeah. You know, and they're doing it. So I would say... Check. check. Okay. Right. Here's another one. Support any socialist movement to give centralized control over any part of the culture, education, social agencies, welfare programs, mental health, clinics, and others. Check. Check. Well, you're looking, too, at uh, the NEA, the National Education Association, that, you know, the things that they're doing. And uh, they said they don't listen to us because we love kids. They don't listen. This is the president, mm -hmm. reportedly. We had him on, I had him on former yeah. president of NEA. They don't listen to us because... I don't know if it was the president, but it was a person they had at the podium at the National Education Association. Okay. They don't listen to us because we love kids. They don't listen to us because we're good at education. He went through different things. He said, they listen to us because we got money. We have like a million members yes. to pay this much money. Yes. And it gives us this much power. And you're looking, that would be a check. check. Yeah. Okay. Check. And plus other organizations as well. Oh, that's tons just of one. Them. Yeah. If we had more time, we could really go, we go in length on this. Yes. Here's another one. Discredit the family as an institution and encourage promiscuity and easy divorce. You know, the thing about this, John, that, that bothers me is because there is absolute truth and there are huge consequences for not following truth. That's one thing. Eternal David, consequences. Yes, yeah, local and reg regional, local and eternal. Yeah. But, you know, uh, David Barton talked about that when he was teaching history and they were shocked. The students were shocked to find out that there's consequences. Hmm. But if there is no truth and there is no absolutes, then this stuff plays off. They had to remove these absolutes. And so right. we got to begin to, you know, that's one thing that's so important. And I want to tell you right now, that's one thing that we're focused on here. We have a, a drive to be able to impact all seven spheres of culture, the seven mountains we call them. It's VFN Kingdom Business. And we talk about dealing with the, the religious mountain. We talk about dealing with the family mountain, the education mountain, the business mountain, the arts and entertainment mountain, the, uh, church. the church and the government mountain. As a matter of fact, I want you to... Partnering with us, 
us doing this together, we have to begin to be the counter narrative, the true narrative to what's mm -hmm. going on. If not, we're going to lose this thing. But listen, watch what we're doing. Watch the condition. But watch what we're doing right here at VFN Kingdom Business. Check it out. In every city of the world, an unseen battle rages for dominion over God's creation and the souls of people. This battle is fought on seven strategic fronts, looming like mountains over the culture to shape and influence its destiny. Over the years, the church slowly retreated from its place of influence on these mountains, leaving a void now filled with darkness. When we lose our influence, we lose the culture, and when we lose the culture, we fail to advance the kingdom of God. And now, a generation stands in desperate need. It's time to fight for them and take back these mountains of influence. The mountain of government, where evil is either restrained or endorsed. The mountain of education, where truths or lies about God and his creation are taught. The mountain of media, where information is interpreted through the lens of good or evil. The mountain of arts and entertainment, where values and virtue are celebrated or distorted. The mountain of religion, where people worship God in spirit and truth or settle for a religious ritual. The mountain of family, where either the blessing or a curse is passed on to successive generations. And the one mountain they all depend on, the mountain that fuels and funds all the other mountains. The mountain of business, where people build for the glory of God or the glory of man, where resources are consecrated for the kingdom of God or captured for the powers of darkness. Those who lead this mountain control what influences our culture. The last 50 years, we've seen the most rapid moral decline in history. The culture we inherited from our forefathers is disintegrating before our eyes. What kind of world are we leaving for our children and grandchildren? As long as the business mountain is held by enemies of the gospel, funding for the other mountains will always be constrained, and any efforts to advance the kingdom of God will be hindered. Imagine God's people reclaiming their cities in government, in the arts and entertainment, in the media, in education, in the family, in religious influence, but only limited by their imagination and not by a lack of finances. It's possible, but first, we must take back the mountain of business. God's move to take this mountain back has already begun. 90% of people working in the marketplace believe in God. 78% believe spirituality and business mix. 70% say that because of their faith, they find meaning and purpose in life. There are over 56 million Bible-believing Christians working in the marketplace. A vast army of God waiting to be truly engaged in the battle. Yet this strategic army and battlefront has largely been left ignored by the church. More than 90% of church members do not feel they are being equipped or trained by the church to apply biblical faith in their day-to-day -day life. The business mountain is so strategic because that is the place of influence. When you look at the culture, so much of the culture is defined by what happens in business. If we would use the wealth of the world to bless the world, and bless it not only to distribute to the needy that which is needed, but when we bring economy and economic benefit to a nation or to a culture, then you have influence over that culture. The people, as they're transformed, will transform all seven mountains. It is time to reclaim the seven mountains and bring the life of God back into our culture. Join the movement. Join. Go to vfnkb.org and be a part of the answer. We cannot yeah. continue to just yell at darkness and mm -hmm. watch on our TV screens as we're watching our nation turn upside down, this counter move going on. You need to join the movement 
in regards to, you know, impacting each of these mountains. And we're doing that with VFN yes, TV, are. VFN yes, King of Business, and we want to help you. And you have a role to play. You have, it's, it's us together. And you can do that by, you know, becoming a part of the team, no matter where you are in the world or where you are in the nation. But also you can, you can partner financially. And, and if you, at least you know when you're at work, I'm doing something about it, impacting mm -hmm. these things, because it's going to increase. The Benham brothers are saying in this article in, in Charisma Magazine, there's going to be bloodshed in America. What the bloodshed is an aggressive movement coming against the right way to take the nation. And so we got to stand, but we don't stand by hiding out. Yeah. We have to come out and actually stand up for our nation. One way to think about it is, what kind of country do we want to leave to our children? The sad thing about it, a lot of this generation kills their children. They don't, they, so what, 70, how many million children's been aborted? Over 50 plus million. 50 plus million children have been aborted. Land. You're looking at, 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 at the enemy has just reprogrammed people's minds that not even think about anybody else but themselves. You know, we That's had a program, right. you know, called Selfish by Choice, Childless, Childless by, by, by choice. choice, and they said we don't want to, you know, why spend all this money on a kid that's going to grow up at, at 15 years old or so and, and tell you that they hate you. Yeah, it's you called know? love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. And it's like it, because things turn around. There's one more that they covered in the book, the naked communists. These, these things you need to do to be able to turn it from. Freedom to yeah, communism. These are just highlights. There's right, more, but here's, right. here's one more we'll okay. share. Create the impression that violence and insurrection are legitimate aspects of the American tradition that students and special interest groups should rise up and use united force to solve an economic, political, and social problems. Does this sound familiar? This is exactly what the Benham Brothers are talking about. It's what we've been talking about and understanding that if we do nothing, yeah. if you sit back and do nothing, and many times people have been defeated because they did nothing. It's not because they weren't stronger, they weren't bigger. This whole narrative was to make you think that you're not powerful anymore. This whole narrative was to make people think that the, the Constitution is not important anymore. This whole narrative has been about saying, you know, God's not relevant anymore. It, they're all lies. God's present, He's relevant, He's watching us. The Constitution is real, and we can stand up for what others have laid their life down for. Go to Arlington Cemetery. Go to, uh, on the Gulf Coast, go down to the National, Avi National Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida, and go out to the cemetery out there, Barranca Cemetery, oh, yeah. and realize they laid their lives down. We can at least stand up if they laid their lives down for us to be able to Absolutely. have this kind of freedom. What they're saying is not true. If they say up, think down. If they say right, think left. If they say, you know, the opposite, they're going to say the opposite. And, and, you know, Jesus said, he said, your father is the devil, you know, yeah. that... That you know, he when he lies, lies, he speaks his native language, and uh, uh, some of the reports are on our previous leadership was they had no problem saying was it what was what wasn't true as if it was true, and again and again and again. Listen, freedom is here. God told me specifically the seed of evil is going to come down and the seed of the righteous is going to rise. But listen, we want to give this to you. It's it, make sure you get this offer. We told you about it a little bit earlier. We want to send this to you. The de details are earlier in the program. But we got to be able to stand and fight for this freedom because freedom isn't free. People pay a price for it. But when God's on your side, you win. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You got to have a strategy and you got to fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you got to fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win. You'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take. And quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. So many people talk about you should do this, and you should do this, and you should do this. And look what they're doing, they're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you, you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we wanna bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at vfnkb.com. That's vfnkb.com. Get your free copy today. We're talking this whole program. We'll start off with Dr. Ben Carson and we're hearing from the Benham Brothers uh, who wrote an article in Crucible Magazine talking about, also about the book called The Naked Communist. It was written in 1963 yes. that Dr. Ben Carson says like it was written yesterday. Mm. And some of the strategies, there's 40 something, 45 strategies. 45 strategies. strategies we'll make sure those are all available for you on the VFN Torch. We just covered some of them, but there's 100% of the ones we covered yeah. that has done how to turn a country that's free, a democracy, to communist country. Yes, without firing a single without bullet. Without firing a single bullet. And so 
We're about to read you some quotes. These are not our quotes. This no. is what's written in the article about what these guys are saying. They're saying fact, this is a problem that many of the cultural leaders in this movement are now calling for and sometimes are even demanding bloodshed. And so I want to read you a couple of these quotes. And this first one, let's just say their name first. And yeah, then Dan Savage. What's Dan Savage saying? He says, I wish they, speaking of Republicans, were all expletive they cursed. dead. So right. he said, I wish, so Dan Savage is saying that he wished all Republicans are dead. And that's what just, I mean, this is the assassination attempt that just took place at yeah. the, the Alexandria ballpark when the- In Virginia. While the uh, Republican congressmen were practicing for that charity game, and it wasn't for the police officers, they no. would have been- Well, reports are that the, the shooter, the assassin, asked someone who walked off the field, who's playing on there? Is Democrats or Republicans? Yeah. And allegedly, the person said, those are Republicans practicing. Right, and he had a list of the four Republicans a hit in his list. pocket. So this is, so that actually, is this is what they're trying to do, stir up And this. it's happened yeah, already. Okay. What else? So what, here's what? another quote from who's? Stephen Crockett. Okay, Stephen Crockett. A Democratic uh, talk radio host. What is he saying? And he said, if, if I had it my way, I would see politician oh. and politician activists strapped down to electric chairs and lit up like Christmas trees, the better the the better to light the way for American democracy and American freedom. This is the Democratic Talk Radio host. What's his name? Stephen Crockett. Steve, Steve Crockett. He's literally saying the same thing Nero did in regards to mm. burning. Remember, he put yes. Christians up on post. He's talking about basically Republicans to just light them up like a Christmas tree. One saying, "Kill them." One saying, I guess, light them up. That would be the same thing. You light them up. Okay. Yeah. What else is being said? Here, here's another thing that's being said. Republicans whose goal in life is to profit from disaster and who don't give a hoot about human beings either can or won't, which is why I personally think they should be exterminated before they cause any more harm. The Village Voice, Michael Fine. Fein so he's saying exterminate who? The Republicans. The Republicans. Which are the conservative viewpoint of our nation, you know, wanting laws and uh, borders and yeah. freedom. This is crazy. This crazy. is but this lines right up with what's being said. That's right. Uh, who's the next one? Again, you know, we're quoting this from this article in Charisma, Charisma Magazine. This is Bill Maher. This is Bill Maher. Mm -hmm. And he said, I have zero doubt that if politician was not in power, people wouldn't be dying needlessly tomorrow. I'm just saying, if he did die, other people, more people, would live. That's a fact. Bill Maher. Bill um, Maher. So, uh, this is the same type of. These narrative. are people in media positions, and they're oh, saying sure. out. There was a day that you couldn't put these threats out against people's lives like this. And no, it's, it's called the threat. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 it's, and you're seeing people listening to these things. And they're going, one took a, a high power rifle and went to the uh, Alexandria ballpark where Republicans. Reportedly, it was, it was, it was said, allegedly it was said that the, the reason the, sh the shooter, the assassin went to shoot uh, uh, the, the representative from Louisiana who's, who's recovering now was because he voted for Obamacare to, to end Obamacare. We had a list of four. Yeah, four. Well, one so, of them the, yeah. to end Obamacare and that, they were going to lose 50,000 lives. And because of that... Well, that's not true. Well, I mean, of course not it's true. not true. We have the best medical system. Of course it's not true. But that's, yeah. that was the narrative. That was right. the thing that allegedly was being, was being shared. And here's one more here. This one is by uh, a U.S. Berkeley lecturer, Hatem Bazain, B-A-Z-A-I-N. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quote, are you angry? Yeah. Are you angry? Yeah. Are you angry? So yeah. they're, they're at this speaking in yeah. Berkeley. Okay. He's giving a lecture. Okay. Well, we've been watching Intifada in Palestine. We've this, been is, this is the uprising in Palestine where they're stabbing Jews. With they're knives. stoning Jews. They're running over Jews. They killed an American that was there. Remember, it was oh, part yeah. of the traffic light. So they're saying, we're seeing that, right? Yeah, we, okay. we've been watching Intifada in Palestine. We've been watching an uprising in Iraq. And the question is that what are we doing? It's about time that we have an intifada in this country that changes fundamentally the political dynamics in here. And we know that they're going to say some Palestinian being too radical. Well, you haven't seen radicalism yet. Again, a quote from UC Berkeley lecturer Hatam Bazain. So you're saying have, a, have an intifada here. And that's an in uprising, it's just, it just violence. It's a riot, or what it is. Yeah. And I know that our former vice president, was it our former vice president? Was it our former vice president that went over to uh, Israel and said, 
you don't want another intifada. Actually, it was no, the Secretary of John State, Kerry. John Kerry. John Kerry. Threatened Kerry. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu when everything's going great, the yeah. economy's going good, and said, you don't want to see another intifada. And it's like, what is in the hearts of these folks that want to take yeah. away our country? You don't, America's not perfect, but I'm telling you, America, the democracy, the freedom, if you don't have freedom, you, don't have you, a know, lot. you can't even say what you're saying now. So we need to pray for our country, pray for our president, pray that God would give us the grace to have, be able to have our constitution, and we got to stand up and say what's right. If they're saying what's not true, we got to just say the truth in love, not to say it in hate. I think That's Dr. Right. King got a great, a great example Ooh. how to stand up and, and move in love, but move in bold truth, and realize there's a more people out there in America that have a good heart, and that's what he believed, and he was right, that when they see what's going on, they'll stand up and do something about it. And I believe you're going to do something about it. We're going to stand up for what's right. I want to pray for you right now. And we've got to pray for our country and pray for the Benham brothers who are taking this stand. You know, it's just a wonderful thing to see truth stand up like this. And Father God, we just, we thank you for those that are standing up and, 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 and speaking truth, God. And we just pray for those right now that, that are just darkened in their understanding, not understanding that this is an important free society to have. Lord, that you begin to show us how to begin to impact each of these seven mountains through VFN Kingdom Business. Touch hearts of people that are watching and listening to, to partner, to connect, to participate, no matter where they are, to stand up to impact these seven mountains. You called call us. You called us to make disciples of nations. And we do that by impacting these seven mountains, Father God. Lord, and I pray right now for the protection of America. I pray, God, for peace. I pray for our education system to be turned back to you. God, I pray for our audience right now that you would bless their hearts and you would touch them and comfort them and give them wisdom and a strategy to stand up for truth. And we ask you, Lord, to end abortion, send revival, send a third great awakening, we pray. In Jesus' name, God bless. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.